This is an unboxing video for the uh, Dragon Force RG65 yacht, which has uh, just recently come out in the UK. Uh, I'm not a great believer in unboxing videos, but uh, I thought this may be of interest to people uh, because this actual boat is uh, designed to attract newcomers to the sport of RC uh, model uh, yacht racing. And uh, for the money, I think it's one of the uh, most uh, highly completed kits you're ever likely to buy. What comes in the box is uh, two manuals. First one's in English, second one's in German. Obviously that may vary around the world depending on where you buy it. Uh, the boat itself comes highly prefabricated. It's, um, it's said you can uh, get this thing on the water in under half an hour. I should think that's quite likely if you were to rush things. There's the specifications for the boat. It falls uh, squarely into the RG65 class, but uh, it won't be competitive with the uh, top RG65 boats. Uh, for various reasons, which I'll explain later, it's uh, designed to be sold within its within the RG65 class as it, as its own class. Uh, I'll explain that later on. Here's the manual. It's uh, well put together. It's written in very clear English. Uh, there's no Chinese um, <laughs> uh, mix-ups uh, in the text. It's obviously been proofread and. Uh, it's uh, very, very um, basic. It starts uh, with all the terminology that you use on a boat, so it's aimed at the complete beginner. It's got lots of detailed photographs, uh, how to put the boat together, the kit, uh, the stand, um, how, it, how it's all assembled. Where a photograph won't do, it's got some uh, illustrations, as you can see there. And uh, it's a very, very well put together manual. Um, as I'm saying, this class is actually, this boat is actually designed to uh, encourage more people into uh, RC yacht racing, and it's probably the next step up from the Micromagic um, class of boat, which is quite popular here in the UK. It should be um, more fun to sail and uh, slightly faster. Um, it's more like a, a miniature one meter than um, than the Micromagic is, uh, so it's. Uh, should be a more entertaining boat to sail. As I say, the manual is very detailed. You can see there all the uh, photographs and pictures show uh, what it's like to put together. I always think you can tell the quality of a kit by the uh, documentation that comes with it, so uh, it doesn't surprise me at all that it's actually a very well documented uh, kit. The radio equipment that comes with it is um, a fairly basic affair, but uh, it'll be okay for newcomers and beginners. But um, I think if you're, uh, if this anyone buys this boat who's been doing radio sailing, I think the first thing they'll do is take take the radio out and uh, fit their own receiver and use their own transmitter for no other reason than uh, keeps all their boats compatible. This is what comes in the box. It's all uh, nicely packed. There's the uh, jib boom. And the stub mast. Oh, sorry, that's the top of the main mast. Assembled with all the parts already on it. Here's the jib weight. All the various um, bits of rubber tubing which are used for uh, slide as a slide adjusters for the rigging. This is the top of the main mast. Then we've got the sails. These are nicely made, um, all assembled. Got the eyelets fitted already. The jib's got the uh, the main jib sheet through the uh, leading edge of it already pre-installed. No loose ends or uh, loose stitching. And it comes with that nice uh, dragon logo on it, which is the uh, sort of unofficial class logo I guess. This is the jib, it's the head of the jib, as I say it's all nicely finished and uh, nothing to do whatsoever in the way of uh, building. This is the main uh, sail, again all the eyelets are pre-fitted and it comes with these quick release rings which you'll see in a second which allow you to uh, clip it on and clip it off the main uh, mast. I can see um, experienced yacht racing people dispensing with these and uh, tying the sail on, which is the usual method, because those uh, clips can cause problems with uh, catching on uh, bits of sheeting, bits of string on on the boat as the jib uh, 
tax from port to starboard. It's uh, possible for it to catch. But it's, my, it's only a minor thing. And on a kit like this, I can understand why they've done it. That's the stub mast, which goes into the keel box, which you'll see in a second. There you go. And that's what your main mast slides on top of. Next, we have the main fin, or the fin, I should say. This is a metal alloy construction, finished in black epoxy paint. That's nicely made, constant cooled. You can fit it either way around. It's uh, threaded at either end, one end for the uh, keel to um, screw to, the other end screws to the boat obviously. There's the rudder, again nicely made, nicely finished. Uh, not much you can say about that, as long as it steers the boat it, uh, it's fulfilling its purpose. has a usual thin section on it, which is uh, quite common in uh, model yachting. It has the uh, keyway already uh, filed into it so that the um, steering tiller that you screw to it later won't won't turn once it's been uh, bolted on. There's the keel. Comes out the box nice and straight. Nicely finished. Uh, and for a kit of this price I think it's a, a nice bit of uh, nicely made piece of equipment. The bolts screw that on the stainless steel, so uh, should have no rusting problems, even if you use sail this in salt water. There's the keel bulb. This is made of alloy rather than lead. Um, I imagine that's a, um, uh, a health and safety issue around the world, selling something that's made of lead, but I don't know. It's um, obviously larger than a standard RG65 keel, because it's not quite as heavy. But uh, as this is going to be sailed as a class within a class, it doesn't really matter. The little bit, all these boats will be the same. There's the packing pieces for the keel, which stop it um, disappearing through the box if it's accidentally dropped. The boat itself comes heavily prefabricated. Uh, but there's the bag of bits you'll require to finish it off. There's two bits of sponge rubber there that go on the stand. Um, additional line you need to finish the rigging off. There's the two stainless steel bolts. You've got Allen keys that fit all the bolts, bowsies for all the rigging, a uh, deck patch there for the forward compartment and the masthead crane is in there as well somewhere. That's the radio control transmitter that comes with it. I'm not going to spend any time on that. Uh, that's the deck patch, sorry, that goes uh, over the main radio bay. That's the transmitter that comes with it. I'm not going to spend any time on that because on mine I didn't use it. Uh, it was going to go straight onto eBay <laughs> and recover some money from the uh, cost of the kit. There's the main mast, which I'm not sure is a carbon tube or whether it's just a plastic extrusion, but either way it's very stiff and uh, more than suitable for the purpose to uh, which it's going to be put on this boat. There's the main sail boom together with the kicker assembly. It's all pre-assembled pre as it comes out of the box. I haven't done anything to this kit at all. This is this is exactly as it was when uh, I took the uh, open, when I opened the box. There's the kicker. It's quite um, difficult to adjust. It's quite tight when new, but you'll need an Allen key or a screwdriver just to turn that hex bolt to adjust the sail angle. It's a ball race top and bottom with some uh, nicely sealed ball bearings, and it's quite nicely uh, moulded and uh, quite nicely constructed. And the boat itself has all the radio equipment pre-fitted, all the servos and all the rigging. The, uh, sorry, the um, rigging for the sail winch. There's the standard battery box that comes with it. It takes four uh, AA cells. Uh, most people will throw that away if they're going to fit their own radio. And they'll fit NICADs or lithium-ion batteries, whichever is their preference. Uh, when the boat comes, all the connectors are nicely um, slopping around the bottom of the boat, which isn't a good idea. Um, if you're going to um, keep with the standard electrics I would uh, pull all those connectors above the servo tray and just tape them to the battery box because if there's any water gets in the boat you don't want it slopping around on the electrical connectors this is the standard receiver that comes with it it's actually quite fiddly to get out but um, when it does come out you'll see it's quite a nicely made receiver actually it looks fully waterproof uh, quite a quite a high quality mouldings it uh, actually looks quite nice it's a shame I'm not going to use it but um, I'm sure it will do somebody some 
some good on eBay. I think I think the majority of people will actually end up fitting their own radio equipment in, but um, for for an absolute beginner, there's nothing wrong with this. It will work. Um, it's just obviously just not up to the high specs of uh, normal radio control equipment. All the plugs are standard uh, Futaba JR type, so you can fit your own equipment in no problem at all. They haven't used any proprietary connectors. There's the steering uh, arrangement. It, uh, the output arm goes through the uh, waterproof bellows there, and that'll connect to the rudder post, which comes up through that uh, oval-shaped um, grommet at the back. The main winch uh, rigging is all pre-installed. There's the turn block, which the uh, line goes around. The line looks quite good quality. It's Terralene or Dacron, and it looks like it will last quite well. So there's no need to replace that. It's... Uh, should should be adequate for the job. The hull itself is a uh, white ABS moulding which has been uh, painted black. That's the sail winch. I've no idea what the sail winch is. There's no um, manufacturer's markings um, or model number on it. That's the um, standard logos that come on the boat. They're uh, lacquered on so they're not, not going to be uh, take-offable if people are thinking of uh, putting a new colour scheme on. As I said it's a white ABS hull which has been painted black but it's been uh, finished quite nicely. There was one or two little marks on mine but nothing that you wouldn't really expect coming from a mass produced kit. There's the uh, rudder stern post and that's the uh, main fin box. That That is removable. It's um, two piece moulding clips in from top and bottom. Ignore all those white uh, parts they're just polystyrene from the from the actual box. The front of the, mold, uh, front of the uh, boat has got a moulding mark in it, which you can just see there. It's like a line. That's where the top and the bottom of the hull are uh, glued together. Um, some people have complained about this on the forums, but I don't really think it's much of a problem. I can't see it uh, in, um, affecting the performance of the boat in any way. And they're all the same anyway. So if they're going to be raced in class, I, I can't see there's any sort of problem. If you want to be pedantic, you could probably fill that with filler and re repaint it if you really wanted to, but I can't see the point. The boat's fitted with the um, bow rubber there, which um, stops you damaging other people's boats if you uh, accidentally crash into them. That's a mandatory thing in the class anyway, so that's uh, it's nice that it's fitted. As I say, the hull's, I think, a good quality. Here's the foredeck. That's the rigging. That's the uh, elastic um, take-up line for the main winch. Keeps the um, line taut. The deck screw is all pre-fitted. Um, I found that a couple of them were loose on my boat and you may want to put a dab of super glue or epoxy on them just to stop them turning and also to keep them 100% waterproof. Again, they look good quality and they look like something that's going to last. That's the main mast uh, mounting point. There's the on-off switch, which is a normal radio control type um, slide switch and it's under a waterproof cover and they can't see any problem with that. At the rear, you have a drain bug, drain bung, I should say, which is a um, little rubber plug. And when you're sailing, that'll allow you to pull that out and just tip the boat um, stern end down, and any water inside should um, come out. I can't see it being a wet boat inside because it's actually quite neat, quite nicely put together, and there's very few places for water to get in. So they probably just put that on there as a um, finishing touch. So there you have it. There's the uh, RG65. Dragon Force, um, manufactured by Josway Yachts. It's being imported by Ritmax. Should be available in all good model shops in the uh, fullness of time. And uh, it, uh, hopefully, it's going to um, get a lot of people interested in RC um, racing. If you've if you've got a Micro Magic at the moment, or some small yacht like that, a Victoria, or one of these Thunder Tiger kits, then um, this is obviously a nice boat to progress up to. It's more of a racing style boat and uh, it's already been designed to go straight into a existing class so all in all it should be a great thing. Uh, this boat came from RC Yachts which is uh, main distributor in the UK but as I say it's also available from most Ripmax dealers. Anyway I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video and if you didn't you've just wasted uh, 15 minutes of your life. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>